Good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to present my uh, doctoral dissertation topic. And uh, uh, after my defense, I started to work as a research scientist for a research company. And unfortunately, last year I uh, have not have time and any related project to the topic. But recently, as it was uh, uh, promised to me, I will have uh, opportunity to continue the topic, maybe with some industrial applications. I hope so. So the work done is in uh, close collaboration with my uh, colleague Sergei Hakalo and our supervisor Yarko Nironin. Uh, here is my outline. Uh, I would like to start with a short motivation uh, descri uh, describing the motivation to develop the strain gradient elasticity theory and uh, then I will touch the structural models which uh, which I considered in my doctoral dissertation then explain and uh, say a couple of words about isogeometric analysis in abacus and our uh, implementations and then end up with the most interesting I guess uh, part related to applications so why, uh, what is the reason, what is the motivation to develop uh, the family of generalized continuum theories is, uh, is the fact that uh, materials have microstructure and uh, we want to take this microstructure into account when uh, some characteristic lengths, uh, characteristic sizes of the structure is uh, about of the uh, intrinsic uh, length, length scale parameters. Uh, there are several theories and uh, uh, which or originates uh, more than uh, one century ago from the works of Cosra brothers, so-called micropolar theory, which uh, assu assumes that there is an, uh, an additional uh, vector of unknowns, uh, vector of rotations, addition to the vector of displacements. Uh, but um, uh, the theory which we, we consider is strain gradient elasticity, um, which implies that, uh, uh, that uh, we, we can add additional uh, tensor of unknown variables and then we, uh, which called uh, um, micro deformation tensor, and then we simplify this theory by assuming that this is just gradient of the displacements. So we don't have any additional degree of freedom, but we have additional terms in in the energy. Uh, yeah, and this is this additional term which uh, relates to the couple stress and its work con conjugate uh, counterpart. Uh, or conjugate uh, gradient of, of, of uh, strains. But the problem is that this theory, uh, theory demands to define 171 new independent uh, constants for the material, which is a very difficult, very difficult problem. Of course, there are some simplifications of this theory. Uh, one of them uh, were de was developed uh, around 20 years ago. Uh, so, and it, it implies that there is only one additional gradient elastic parameter G in the simplest isotropic case. And uh, uh, what is uh, this uh, constants, these new constants are about? Uh, I have a lot of uh, discussions with different uh, scientists and uh, also in uh, literature can, can be found different values of such, uh, such parameters. And it seems that if we consider some structures on the nano level, uh, these uh, mat material parameters are related to some interatomic distances. On the micro level, they relate to the sizes of grains in metals or some uh, holes in porous materials. And in some artificial architectured materials, it's somehow related to the size of a periodic lattice. And this size can be of any range from uh, micro, uh, micrometers to even meters. 
And uh, on nano and, and micro size, there are a lot of applications. Uh, mostly they relate to so-called nano and uh, micro electromechanical systems, where we have uh, some uh, working elements, uh, some beams or shells, uh, which have, uh, let's say, thickness uh, compatible to the, to the grains, if it's metal. So we cannot uh, use just standard continuum mechanics. We, we need to use something more, and stranger and elasticity helps here to describe the, uh, the elastic behavior of su such structures. Uh, maybe more interesting uh, applications are related to, uh, to ar architect uh, artificial architectured materials, different uh, lattice or cellular materials. Uh, there are actually a lot of them, a lot of different uh, configurations can be, can be built, can be used. And uh, they, of course, have a lot of applications uh, in, in modern engi engineering science and also in, in, in some uh, projects of, of future. So definitely we will use more and more smart materials, metamaterials, to, to more efficient materials. And uh, the last, uh, maybe la the last uh, advantage of using such theories uh, was uh, uh, reported by, by many scientists who usually uh, work with uh, damage me mechanics. So the fact that uh, strain gradient elasticity helps uh, to smooth the unphysical singularities appearing in some crack tips or sharp corners or in point loads and, and so on. So here I just briefly uh, list all the solid and structural models I touched during, work on, uh, during my work on, on the thesis. Uh, all kind of uh, solid structures, then beams, Eller Bernoulli and Timoshenko beams, and even some higher order shear deformable or third order shear deformable models, beam models. And their anisotropic counterparts, and also with some applications to the engineering sandwich beams. And of course, shells and plates models. Uh, yeah, maybe the most uh, missing models, uh, which were not considered, are curvil curvilinear special beams, and some anisotropic uh, anisotropic models for shells, uh, because they have a lot of applications, and it's and the, and the, the model still missing. Uh, yeah. Of course, I don't have time to speak about all the structural models, but I tried to 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 focus on some interesting results which were obtained. And first one is uh, so when we consider uh, the gradient elastic Euler Bernoulli B model, we of course have this higher order term uh, relates to relates to gradient elasticity and. Uh, Usually, when we consider only classic model, uh, we don't take into account if if we consider beam on two D on two D uh, beam on two D uh, space. So we uh, don't consider uh, other derivatives in gradient operator. Just take this one. But uh, when when we work with strain gradient elasticity, which we should take into account also other uh, derivatives in other directions. And these terms are here. And why they are, are, are important? So uh, we want to, uh, to capture so-called size effect, which, uh, which, is, uh, which means that when uh, the thickness of the beam tends to some uh, length, uh, intrinsic length of the material, uh, the dimensionless bending rigidity uh, increases dramatically. But if we don't take into account this term, we definitely have, we, we, we cannot capture this kind of effect. And this effect also can be observed in experiments. And it shows that the uh, strain gradient elasticity uh, uh, captures uh, such kind of uh, size effect very, very good. And uh, the uh, yeah, I, I also have a lot of uh, disputes with uh, researchers about uh, about this term, 
and uh, the very simple way to check why why do we need to include it also is to uh, solve the problem with a full 3d uh, fine scale model and we see the same effect uh, for the 3d model where we don't have any structural uh, simplifications so if we take into account all the parts of the model we we, we have good results uh, Another, again, back to the uh, Euler-Bernoulli beam model, another term which uh, now we work with, uh, with a dynamical uh, equation. And uh, uh, also there is uh, Euler-Bernoulli relay model, which take into account the, uh, the rotatory inertia term. And it's shown that only uh, if we take into account these terms, we, we have physical behavior of the, of the uh, phase velocity. And uh, also for the, for the gradient elasticity, we have higher order term, which should be taken into account if we want to have uh, the phase velocity ten, uh, tends to, to some finite value. value. Uh, let's go now to the Timoshenko beam model. Here, uh, here the difference uh, is the same as uh, as in framework of the classical elasticity. So we Timoshenko beam model just works better for the for the thick beams, as can be shown here. But what is uh, interesting, uh, if we go to the uh, to the variation formulation of, of the beam, uh, we, uh, we will see that there are some shear locking terms exist, which is well known a uh, computational problem. Uh, it, it means then uh, when our beam is very thin, so the thickness tends to, to some small value, uh, we don't have a good, we don't have good uh, numerical results. And uh, we suggested to uh, change changes of variables to get rid of such kind of, such kind of effects, and uh, which also works for a gradient elastic uh, Timoshenko beam model. So first we suggested first uh, one change of variables, but it it, it, uh, it works good. But uh, one can ask why we still have uh, uh, this kind of locking terms. Then we suggested also second change of variables, which uh, doesn't doesn't contain any uh, any type of uh, these locking terms, and it works perfectly. There is no any no any locking, as we can see in the standard model. Okay, some uh, convergence curves. Let's go now to the kirchhoff love shell model. So this model was derived for the first time in the framework of uh, strain gradient elasticity. Maybe I should skip all the uh, mathematical details. Just want to say that uh, all the results which we obtained uh, for the B models, we also take into account for the shell model, meaning the, these full gradient terms. And these full gradient terms, they give uh, so in classical uh, shell model, we have uh, we have the energy which uh, can be divided to the membrane membrane part and to the bending part, and it seems that for gradient elasticity we uh, don't have this uh, decoupling anymore, which uh, yeah should be also taken into account when we when we uh, write the the variational formulations. Okay, simple test. We don't have any uh, analytical solutions e even for shell model, but we uh, want somehow to check our numerical results. And uh, the simplest way is to, to, to build the solid models. And yeah, they show the good correlation between, between the models and the results are pretty good. Yeah, the solid model was also implemented just to, to, for checking the, the shell models actually. A uh, couple of words about isogeometric analysis, why it's important to use it here. The most important advantage of the isogeometric analysis is that it provides uh, CP-1 continuity, so any continuity across 
the element boundaries, which is especially important for gradient elastic models because they contain uh, higher, uh, higher derivatives and it, they demand uh, higher, higher continuity. And of course, the main advantage of isogeometric analysis is uh, uh, that we work, we can work with uh, with uh, complex uh, curved geometries directly, without uh, without meshing and without uh, losing the ge geometry uh, e exactness of the geometry. So, some uh, yeah, maybe I I don't need to explain any. Uh, any uh, isogeometric analysis in details, but the fact is that uh, instead of uh, so, uh, we use the 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 basis functions uh, in role of basis functions. We use NURBS functions, which are used in cut uh, geometry for cut geometry for repre representing the yeah the geometry in cut programs. And we use them as uh, basis functions for our calculations. This engenders some problems. The method is more complex than classical finite elements, but but it has a lot of a lot of advantages. So just a couple of technical details. I'm not going to, going uh, deep to the details, but there are a lot of programming stuff behind this. And uh, so the fact that we can use any by using our uh, subroutines, by using our uh, soft, homemade soft, uh, so we can uh, use, take any uh, any NURBS geometry directly from the cut file and uh, after uh, being processed by uh, by uh, some scripts, it uh, creates the the input file for Abacus, uh, which we can use further for calculations. And uh, isogeometric analysis in Abacus uh, is implemented by using a user element subroutines. And uh, after the solution process, we can output the database to any any uh, external uh, external programs like Paraview, but we pref uh, prefer to use Abacus Viewer. So for this, we also wrote uh, the uh, the post-processing uh, script, which creates uh, good ODB output databases, for, uh, which understandable by Abacus viewer. So all the process can be done in Abacus now, but uh, yeah, actually some of the steps can be uh, can be also performed to any other programs. Like for example, we are not we not need to use Abacus Solver, we can use some uh, external uh, free software for IGA. And this scheme is, uh, sh shows uh, the, you know, just some details about, about the solution process. And the main difference between classical elasticity and strain gradient elasticity is that we have these additions to stiffness and or and mass matrix or force vector and that's actually it so th so the the idea is quite quite simple here yeah the the missing point now is uh, is uh, m uh, processing multi patches multi patch geometries uh, more complex geometries okay so maybe to some examples. The most interesting ones. Um, so we have uh, some real structure. Um, we have some real structure uh, made of triangular lattice. We want to do some homogenization, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, so yeah we have this kind of uh, representative volume element. When we perform uh, classical standard homogenization, uh, we obtain effective continuum and. Uh, we also can show uh, that uh, comparing the results for the for the beam model by using this uh, by using this uh, homogen homogenized parameter, uh, the beam model cannot uh, explain the behavior of such kind of structures. Uh, but 
if we also introduce strain gradient elasticity, we can uh, capture the behavior of, of such kind of uh, such kind of structures. Yeah, here it is shown that. Yeah, and uh, th then uh, we can define the the G parameter, which is a strain gradient elasticity parameter, uh, for this kind for this certain kind of RVE. And then use it for any kind of, of geometry to explain the, the mechanical behavior or elastic behavior of the structure. So uh, later uh, this year, I guided one uh, master master thesis related to uh, gen automatic generation generation of different kind of lattice structures, and we also one of the applications we also uh, we also apply this. Uh, this program uh, to define the gradient elastic parameter automatically by pushing only one button and for any kind of uh, of rve we can obtain the the gradient elastic parameters and last last example uh, regarding to the plate uh, micro uh, plate with microstructure uh, so we use a 2d plate model meaning that we need to obtain four additional uh, so this is anisotropic plate and uh, we need to use anisotropic strain gradient elasticity and we have four additional moduli for it and we can define them step by step by using different tests uh, which uh, where we exclude all other all other uh, constants and step by step we can define all the parameters and for this um, we have quite good good results that uh, simple simple plate model can uh, can explain the behavior of this kind of complex structures and uh, of course the main goal of homogenization is a time saving time so you can see here that that uh, this works much more uh, faster and uh, we can use any thickness of the structure and yeah this opens some possibilities to also to parametric studies Okay. The next step would be uh, would be the the do this to do the same for the shell structures, but now it's well, but now it's the missing point. I hope one day I will return to this to this topic. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much.